The movie starts in a peaceful suburban neighborhood where all of a sudden, a young girl starts running. She continuously looks over her shoulder as she crosses to the other side of the road, implying that she's trying to escape from someone. After a while, when she reaches home, her father comes out and asks if everything is okay. However, the girl simply runs right past him, gets into her car, and drives away. Following this, she continues driving for hours. Even during this time, she keeps looking behind, as if someone is chasing her. Finally, she stops at a beach and calls her family. The girl frantically tells them that she loves them a lot and that they shouldn't worry about her. After the call, she sits on the beach, waiting for something. The next morning, the girl is found dead on the same spot. Her leg is twisted in a horrific act of violence. The next scene is set in another suburban neighborhood, like any other. Jay, a young girl, is swimming in her backyard pool. Her friends are watching a movie inside, but Jay doesn't seem interested, as she has to get ready for her date. In the evening, she meets her date, Hugh, at a movie theater. As the two are waiting for the show to begin, Hugh spots a strange woman in a yellow dress standing by the entrance. He quickly asks Jay if she can see the woman, but the latter says no. With this, Hugh starts getting uncomfortable and asks if they can leave. Confused, Jay asks for the reason, but Hugh simply makes an excuse that he isn't feeling well. With this, the two call it a night and depart. The next morning, Jay is chatting with her friend about the date. She's clearly interested in Hugh and expresses her desire to be in a relationship with him. That same night, they go out again. They have dinner at a restaurant, and as the two are talking, a mysterious figure approaches Hugh slowly. Later, the couple goes to a secluded place and has a romantic time in Hugh's car. However, before Jay can put her clothes back on, she is suddenly jumped by Hugh from behind. He chloroforms her and knocks her unconscious. The next thing Jay knows, she's tied to a wheelchair in an abandoned parking lot. Hugh seems apologetic and promises not to hurt her. He then reveals why he is doing all this. It turns out, a mysterious entity is following him around everywhere he goes. It all started when he had intercourse with a girl and her curse was passed on to him. Hugh further explains that the only way to pass on the curse is to have intercourse with someone else. Lastly, he also mentions that the entity can take the form of anyone, so one can never know if it's real. Jay obviously doesn't believe him and starts screaming for help. However, Hugh wheels her over to the edge of the building and shows her the entity. Suddenly, Jay spots a strange woman, completely unclothed, slowly walking towards her. Hugh tells her that she has to sleep with someone else to transfer her curse, but if the entity catches up to her, she will be killed. Following this, Hugh drives her back to her friend's house and drops her off. He then flees the place before someone catches him. In no time, Jay's friends rush to help her. They call the cops, and Jay is asked a few questions about what happened. The police investigate, but find no signs of Hugh, as the boy had been using a fake name. The next day at school, while in class, Jay notices an old woman in the distance. She seems really out of place, only dressed in a nightgown. Surprisingly, no one else in the class notices her. As a result, Jay realizes that the woman is is the entity and freaks out. She immediately grabs her bag and leaves, but in the hallway, again encounters the same woman. Terrified, she runs away from the school and heads to a store where her friends Kelly and Paul work. As expected, her friends don't believe any of it, but Paul offers to accompany her at her house that night. Here, we get to know that Paul has a crush on Jay, so he is willing to go to any extent to be with her. Seeing his courage, everyone in the group agrees to accompany Jay so that she feels safe. That night, Jay struggles to sleep as she has become paranoid. Annoyed. She sneaks downstairs and finds Paul watching a movie. He tries to comfort her, saying that everything will be alright, but she does not listen. Just then, they hear the kitchen window smash. Paul goes to look, but sees nothing there. Scared, he then goes upstairs and wakes everyone else. Meanwhile, Jay is left alone downstairs. She decides to check the kitchen for herself. To her horror, she finds a scarred woman limping towards her creepily. Jay rushes upstairs to her friend's room and slams the door behind her. Everyone tries to to calm her down, but Jay has been left traumatized. She finally comes to terms with the fact that she has been cursed, but her friends are still not convinced. After a while, one of them decides to open the door, revealing an empty hallway. Jay is initially relieved, thinking that she was merely hallucinating. But right then, a freakishly tall man comes walking in behind her friend. She screams and immediately escapes out the bedroom window and onto the balcony. In the next scene, Jay reaches a local park on her bike, while her friends catch up and try to calm her down. Seeing Jay getting paranoid, the group decides to track Hugh down so that they can get some answers. Later, the group finds his address and reaches the place, but it's abandoned. Not willing to give up, they then start looking around and find old photos and other clues that point them to Hugh's high school. On reaching the school, they 
they finally find his real address and learn that his name is Jeff. Wasting no time, they arrive at his house and confront him. Jeff immediately apologizes and explains that the same thing was done to him after a one night stand. He reveals that the curse is real and the only way to escape is to pass it on. Hearing this, Jay and her friends are stunned and they decide to get as far away as they can. They then begin listing out potential locations and one of them suggests a friend's lake house. Jay loves the idea and all of them decide to head there. As the days pass, the group forgets all their miseries and has the best time of their lives at the lake house. That is, until one day when a strange woman approaches Jay from behind. She is none other than the entity of death. The woman grabs Jay by the hair, leaving everyone in a state of shock. Paul tries to save his friend, but since he cannot see the entity, he can't do much. When he tries to swing a chair randomly, the entity throws him away. After this, the group runs into a nearby shed. Jay grabs a gun and shoots at the entity, but it does little to no damage to it. Terrified, she slams the shed door and locks it. Surprisingly, the entity bangs on the door and creates a hole at the bottom. Jay waits and sees nothing coming through, and as she moves closer to the hole, she is startled by a small boy with a marked face. The entity has shifted its shape to fit inside the hole. Fortunately, Jay flees from the shed and gets in her car. She then drives away as fast as she can, but in a state of panic, she crashes into a cornfield. In the next scene, Jay wakes up in the hospital with all her friends by her side. She's injured slightly and learns from her friends that she has to stay there for a few days. Hearing this, Jay starts panicking again as she believes that the entity will corner her in the hospital, but her friends calm her down and assure her that they will be by her side. It is at this moment that Jay realizes realizes that she can end all of this. All she has to do is have intercourse with someone and pass on the curse. Luckily, Greg agrees to do it with her, as he still doesn't believe in the curse and wants her to feel normal. Poor, poor Greg. That night, the two have a wonderful moment in the hospital bed. When later asked if it was worth it, Greg said, yes sir, absolutely. A few days later, as Jay is watching over Greg's house, she notices someone breaking in through his front window. Surprised that she can still see the entity, Jay hurriedly calls calls Greg to alert him. Sadly, there's no answer, so she is compelled to rush over to his house. She finds the entity upstairs disguised as Greg's mother, banging on his bedroom door. Jay tries her best to warn Greg, but the latter opens the door and suffers a painful death. Terrified, Jay races out of the house and drives away. She knows that the entity is now following her again. Scared and shocked at what she just witnessed, she travels to the beach as far away as she can get. There, she sees some boys and tries to lure them to have intercourse. However, she changes her mind at the last moment and returns home. The following day, Paul offers to help Jay. He confesses that he likes her and mentions that he is willing to take the curse if that's the only way to keep her safe. Ugh, the men in this movie are so bold. However, this time Jay refuses and instead thinks of a plan to kill the entity once and for all. Later, the surviving group of friends drive to a nearby swimming pool and break in. They've brought with them various electrical items that they intend to use to shock the water. Jay acts as bait and waits in the pool for the the entity. After a while, she spots it walking in. However, their plan backfires when the entity starts throwing in the electrical items into the pool. It seems as if the entity is an intelligent one. Expectedly, Jay starts panicking and she goes below the water to dodge the attacks. Her friends also scramble to help her but can't see where the entity is. Meanwhile, Paul takes out a gun and tries to shoot it. He is guided by Jay but accidentally ends up shooting one of his friends in the leg. As the entity continues throwing objects at Jay, one of the friends cleverly throws a blanket over it so that Paul can see where it is. He immediately shoots the entity in the head, causing it to collapse in the pool. Believing that they have finally succeeded in their mission, Jay proceeds to swim out of the pool, but the entity once again gets up and grabs her foot. It tries to drag her underneath the water and drown her, but fortunately, the heroic Paul aims at the entity and shoots it multiple times, causing it to finally let go of Jay. This makes the group assume that they have finally killed the entity, but to their horror, the pool starts getting filled with a strange red liquid. The entity is nowhere to be seen and their plan has failed once again. Again. Realizing that it cannot be killed, Jay changes her mind and sleeps with Paul that night. Poor, poor Polly. With this, the curse has been transferred to him. In the final scene of the movie, Paul wanders around town, looking for the perfect person to pass the curse on to. He sees two hookers and briefly stops his car to interact with them. This movie is an all-time classic. It's a shame that it didn't have a better ending. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.